All right. We are live. Hi, everybody. Back for another exciting episode. Saturday night, craft night. <laughs> I have a guest, crafter, maker, business owner, all of it tonight. So you probably know her. She's local. She's been here forever. She runs Lit Studios. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Kylie. If you don't know her name, <laughs> Kylie Smith. Um, she's going to be making a door hanger with me tonight, or I'm going to be teaching her. She, she, we act like she doesn't know how to paint. So we're going to pretend that she has never painted before. And I'm going to teach her how to make the door hanger. So I appreciate you coming. Thank you for inviting me. So I'm um, going to tell you real quick. I'm trying. We just got Idea Tech Internet. So I'm trying out their um, Wi-Fi for the live. So we know in the past we all had issues. So if for some reason in the next couple minutes we lose our connection, um, just hang tight. We'll hop back on and we will keep going where we left off. So no worries, no stress. We're going to see how it works out. It's kind of a test run. So, okay. So while we're waiting on people to get on here, um, Kylie and I have been kind of um, meeting behind the scenes and talking about how we can support each other's businesses because we are both um, trying to make it in the small business world and we want everybody to understand and know that we are supportive of each other and we do send business back and forth between our studios so um, we thought it would be a great thing to do to get together and come up with something we can do as a team that you guys might enjoy and that would help us um, keep the momentum going through um, the rest of this COVID-19 stuff. So we wanted to tell you about a promotion that we've come up with for June. And we're gonna send out an event on Facebook June 1st, um, which is Monday apparently, I thought it was Sunday, so. Um, and we're calling it Kits for Caregivers. So if you know of a uh, frontline caregiver in the community that has been working through the COVID-19 um, pandemic, we wanna give you guys an opportunity to nominate them for a gift basket-ish uh, thing from Bull Studios. So we're coming up with some really a nice prize. Um, so what we're gonna do is for uh, the month of June, if you purchase a kit from either studio of $25 or more, we are going to have you guys nominate your caregiver on the Facebook event page. Um, we're going to do some highlights of whoever wins on our Facebook posts. We want to know we want if you have a picture, if you have information about what they do for a living, um, anything you want to share with us, we would love to um, give them some shout outs and kudos on our Facebook page. And we will draw a winner every Friday for the month of June to win a gift basket. So I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's um, going to be fun. And I can't wait for people to dive in and start um, nominating some folks. So we're excited to launch that. So awesome. Um, the other thing, we did a flash sale today in case you were outside enjoying the sun or baseball practice, whatever you're doing now. Um, we did a flash sale today, so we've got two items that are um, up for grabs, pretty cheap. This is a $12 kit. Um, it will come assembled. You will pick your paint colors for the stars and your stain color for the frame. So this one is online right now for purchase. And then we have a American flag. It's probably backwards to you guys, but um, this one is a mini version of the flag we did. So we got one star versus a bunch. And it will come assembled, so it's all tacked together. So you'll just need to have some painter's tape available for this one. Um, and it's 16, so that's a great deal. It's like 20 by eight in size. So I just wanted to remind you that those are now available. You wanna snatch those up for 4th of July. Those out of our way. Okay, so we are making this bad boy tonight. We are doing the 17 inch wood round. And you guys have done door hangers at your shop before too. Yep. 
Yeah, so this is not anything new to you, but we're gonna pretend. I have no idea how to paint. You don't know how to do this, okay. She refused an apron, so that's <laughs> number one. She's never been I'm about painting. to ruin this shirt. That's what's happening. <laughs> I'm glad you wore something patriotic. That's pretty I cool. I did. I had it together this morning. Very good. Okay, For let moment. I usually start out by talking about what is in the kits that you got. So, um, you have, other than your wood, um, stencils. So, you'll have your name stencil. You will have two garlands, or whatever we'll call them, vines. And you have two sets of stars. You'll have one that's already weeded that we'll use on the wood and then a set of extra stars. Um, and I'll tell you why you'll need those just in case. So I set those. You have hooks, what we'll put at the end on the top of your hanger to hang it. Um, a little bit of twine and then red, white, and blue paint and a cup of stain, which is a water-based stain. So when we get to this part, since it is water-based, you can just, you don't have to use gloves. It'll come off with soap and water. And um, it doesn't have an odor. So if you're working inside, this is your best option for crafting inside. So that I think is all the supplies. So <laughs> Beverage of choice. Do you have your beverages? I hope so. And I think Tara is supposed to come on tonight, so I'm going to watch for comments here and see if I can get us on the laptop too. Because, of course, I like to watch the comments. So if you want to say hi, if you're making it with us tonight, that would be cool. We would like to hear from you. And there's a little bit of a delay between our, um... okay, my grandma's watching, so. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. All right, and my friend Lourdes is watching. All right, so what we're going to do, like we normally do, is I'm going to move the camera up so you can watch her create and you guys can make with us. So as we're working, if you have a question, just comment. Tilt this down. Try not to make you guys sick. <laughs> I'm watching the delay in it. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. That's fine. We have it together. <laughs> we are professionals here. So far, well, you haven't lost our internet, so I'm slightly impressed. So yay. All right, here we are. Um, you think it should come down a little bit? I don't know. Looks pretty good. If you guys have a hard time seeing, we look beautiful. Oh, Stacy, you're just the best. Appreciate oh, that. Oh, Stacy. Hey, Stacy. I know Stacy. Did you notice I was able to get my hair cut and colored? That's why I'm looking beautiful. <laughs> Makes all the difference. <laughs> that looks good. Yep. Okay, so the first thing we are going to work with is going to be these bad boys right here. And you'll notice that they're cut on a curve to help you line them up. Um, and this is gonna be your divider. So you want the grain of your wood to be going this way. And then you're gonna use this as a guide from the edge over to create your stars. Let's see if that shows up, yeah. So it's gonna create your midline for your stars. So if you're in class with me, you're going to weed this yourself. But since you've got a take-home kit, it, all the hard work has been done for you. What you're going to do is take a credit card or something with a sharp edge, and you're going to rub the front of this. So we typically say, I didn't use... I bring my credit card today. You're not planning on purchasing anything? No. So in class, we normally use our paint trays before we fill them up with paint, and we just give it a good rub with the edge because we're going to peel the back off and want all our stars to stay on the contact paper. You're gonna peel it off already? Mm-hmm. Okay, so, that's right, you flip it over, face down, and you're just gonna gently peel it back. And since you've got stars here, we're gonna, yeah, put that back on there. 
You've got so many little points. The slower you peel, the better it is to make sure everything stays on and you don't tear anything. That's why you have extra stars. It's her friendly way of telling me to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> I was working with vinyl doing my windows today, so. Hmm. Don't feel overconfident. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now you're gonna gently lay it down on the wood, lining it up with the edge there where I've kind of cut it for you. Sticky side down, yep. Perfect. So you'll, you'll notice you've got a couple little voids here. And so what we're gonna do after we take the, take the cover sheet off and we have them stuck down, we're gonna peel a couple of those extra stars and put them kind of where our voids are so that you can make sure it looks consistent all the way across. So go ahead and rub that again with the edge. So now we're going to peel off this top layer of contact paper. Hey Chris, how are you? Can we still buy take home kits? Yes, so we have more kits that have been added to the online store. So if you would like to purchase one, you can go online and do that at any time. And then you'll just play back this video to put it together. Okay, so your extra sheet of stars. You took it. Oh, hiding it from you. Sorry, so sorry. I think you need one up here. And then depending on if you want a little peekaboos on the side here, maybe some right there would be good. It's okay if they hang off. Now I didn't have my stars go over the edge like I did my stripe. I just felt like that would be too hard to keep that little star stuck down. So I just let them finish off on the top part and didn't wrap them around. So she's just gonna have that little baby hang off there so the tip of it shows up when she paints. Okay, so that's the applying of the stars. Not too bad, right? So the next you're going to do is grab your painter's tape. Everybody was asked to provide their own painter's tape, inch and a half, which is the exact width of our stripe. So what we're going to do is first create, get this started for you, it's a new roll. So you're going to create your line here and here, okay? So straight across. So when you want to take a little bit more off of there because we want it, it to around. wrap around the whole side. So you just piece yours together right there to make it wrap. So just make sure you go long enough because you're going to go blue all the way around. And then your next one you're going to go straight up the middle. Now a really important step, because this project involves stain and um, layering, we don't have a lot of opportunity to go back and fix when it comes to the paint. So what I want everybody to do is go back to their credit card or their paint tray with their sharp edge and just take the time to go along your edge right there of your, um, of your painter's tape to make sure you have a really tight seal and that you don't get bleed under. Because even though this feels like a really smooth piece of wood, it's still going to have um, little groovy areas where paint can get under. Okay, use some brushes rolling. So we are starting out with our navy blue, blue paint. So you pull out your navy blue paint cup. And I'll give you some navy blue. So when I painted this, I did one layer of paint because I wanted some of that wood grain to show through so that when you stain it looks consistent the whole way down. So you're just going to do one layer of navy blue, which doesn't take a whole lot. You probably have way more paint than you need. Cover everything? 
Yep, so we're going to cover over top of everything, all the stickers. And you just want to make sure that when you're going back and forth that your brush stroke is consistent with the grain of the wood and that you're hitting all the edges that are around the stickers so that your stars have a real crisp line when you peel those stickers off. <laughs> Jim Groover joined. Hi, Jim. You must have nothing better to do than to watch this. <laughs> so the size, Loxie, the size of the painter's tape that we have is an inch and a half, maybe just a hair less. I think it's an inch point four something um, wide. So. Um, you, if you have something that's thinner, just double it up so that your stripes will be about an inch and a half when we get to the stripe part. I'm going to grab you an extra tray. And then you're going to pick it up almost like a big pizza pie to do your Sorry. edge, yeah. And so she's just done one consistent thin um, layer of paint. So I'm seeing her wood grain coming through, and that's perfect. forever was our last class, which was the firecracker for Tara oh. and I were here for six hours. Ooh. And you wouldn't think, it was very deceiving, you would not think that that project would have taken so long. So, so you have opened up some classes online. Mm -hmm. Do you have, you want to tell us about what's on your calendar? Well, the one Canvas class that I have on the calendar is sold out already. Yay! Everybody's anxious to get back inside and paint. Me too. Um, so I'm going to post that one again and let other people sign up. Um, and then I'll be posting some kids classes to do. Um, now what's your plan as far as the social distancing works? What can people expect when they come into your um, studio? Just to paint, really. I mean, we're all kind of adults, so. You're not going to require masks or anything? Nope. Okay. Nope. nope. Wash your hands. Don't cough on people. Right. Stay as far away as you can. Right. And we'll all be fine, I think. Are you, uh, what's your max on your classes? Are you? Right now it's 15, but that was when I posted the class. That was all I could have at uh -huh. that time. But now we're in phase. I don't know if we're even in a phase. I think it's 100 people now. I think it's 100 people. So Which you would never do that to yourself. I know. No, <laughs> 30 is good. 30 is good. <laughs> mm. OK, so we want to let this dry before we peel off our star. So I'm going to plug in a hair dryer real quick. And in water? Yeah, that would be awesome. Not your drink? I mean, no. <laughs> it probably wouldn't taste any different, but it'd be blue. All right, let me. Well, I forgot my water. All right. And I can give you a hair dryer. Everly says hi. Who? Everly. Everly says hi. Yeah. Okay. Let me get over there and wait to the child. <laughs> I'll wait to her. Hi, Everly. <laughs> oh, we're up here. Hi, Everly. Okay, Everly. Hi. Yeah, she doesn't like me leaving her at home ever. And these always run past bedtime, so. Okay, so rule of thumb with the hair dryer and vinyl is we use the cool setting. On my hair dryer, it is just this top button that you hold down. I have the same ones except black. Oh, 
Very good. I mean, if I had hair dryers and I ever painted before, I would have black ones. You would have black ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so you're all set. I'll let you dry that real quick. did such a thin coat, which is nice. All right, so now we're gonna have the tape removed. I'm gonna take all of it off. Reveal your pretty straight lines. Oh, so straight. <laughs> and then you're gonna start taking your stars off. So if you guys have at home a sewing needle or a stick pin of some kind, we use little hat pins, um, these work great to kind of take those little pieces off. We'll keep those so I don't mess them up. Sure. So go ahead and peel off your stars. Should we go slow for this too? No, the, this is, no, since it's dry, yeah, you can just rip them off. I love the natural wood look, so I had a really <laughs> hard time covering, it up. covering up with stain, but it's still pretty either way. I made one for myself on a Lazy Susan that was just um, like more natural pine color. I had a really hard time coming tonight because I was at the pool drinking margaritas. <laughs> to be completely honest. Well, I worked today. I, yeah, you mentioned I was like, oh, that's not fun. Just putting stickers on my windows. Were you putting just business information mm -hmm. up? Yep. Nice. It's probably time for that. <laughs> well, your awning looks great. Your awning you. gives your front door a lot of attention. I have to drive by when I leave here and see how my stickers look. Yeah, so if you from don't, the road. if you're one of the hermits in town that don't know where Lit Studios is now, they are on Main Street now at four six four sixteen a. Yeah, so right next to Wool Market DIY School. And again, if you for some reason have no clue, she offers painting and pottery. So if you want to go in and just pick your pottery and paint, um, that is something super fun to do with the kids. I loved it. One more, you can have it. Thanks. <laughs> Ta-da! Awesome. Okay, so now we're going to move on to building our stripes. So where you had put the tape here before, now we're gonna go overlay the tape right up to that edge here. 
and I had created my first red stripe here. Okay, so you're going to have your tape on the inside there. Okay. That would be helpful. Yeah, that's, tape. that's fine. <laughs> Lot of projects with door hangers and painters tape at mm -hmm. Christmas time, like pinstripe stuff. Very cool. And so there is a pair of scissors there if you need to kind of straighten out your edge at the bottom if your tear is not quite straight. And you do want to wrap that one too across the top there. Yeah, and you're going to lay it right across those Go stars. all the way across? Yeah, so that one you are going to go all the way across with it. And that really starts your lines for your stripes. So here's a trick to get all your stripes the same width. Take a piece of painter's tape. And what you're gonna do is just lay it down like this. And so this is the width of your next stripe. So when you lay out your next piece, you're just gonna line it right up to the bottom of that piece of tape. And when you um, do the next one, just move this piece of tape down to the next to be your next marker. And you'll end up with nice, even stripes. And then you can use the grain of your wood to help you with the straight across, but you try to go as straight as you can. Yep, and these are gonna wrap around, so make sure you pull the tape long enough that it can wrap around the sides, too. Oh, you just have to move this one down. Don't be wasting the tape, no. Don't worry. Well, it's not my tape. Well, that's true, you paid, you paid for it. In their class, you can use as much as you want. I just move mine down. <laughs> normally decorate at home for 4th of July? Mm -hmm. You do now. <laughs> <laughs> you will now. Well now. No, I don't like to take the stuff back down. Oh, it's fun putting it up like Christmas, but not yeah. so much taking it down. Yeah, yeah no. my Christmas tree at the studio just came down. It was then an Easter tree. Yeah. And Yeah, we, I don't know if you saw pictures, but we decorated this um, windmill, his name is Edward. Okay. Um, and we decorated him for Christmas as a tree. And we did like an angel gift deal on it. But yeah, climbing up there and taking all the lights down off the top blades was not fun. Right. I'm really not looking forward to how quickly Christmas will be here again, and I have I to do it I thought about again. just leaving my tree up, be like, that's my birthday you tree. You need like, my... to slide it in a closet. And just slide it back out. It's huge though. Oh, it's huge. I had two Christmas trees. I did take the front window one down. Hey, Brian. You're one of my faithful tuner inners. Hope you're doing well in Nashville. So, we had a fun little thing where we we're counting is how many states we got people to tune in from. And I think we had like six different states last time. Wow. So, that was pretty cool. All right, so she's got all her stripes done, so she's gonna start wrapping her tape around the sides there so that her stripes can continue around. So everything that you've covered will be where your stain is, and everything that's open, we're gonna paint red. So I will get your red paint ready for you. So a really another important step here. Let's we'll go back to taking your credit card edge. Once you have your paint laid out, is going along every edge with this to make sure it's got a tight seal, and that way you are almost guaranteed to have a perfect line every time. Just 
So do you have in your space, and I, I know I've been in there before, but do you have actual potter's wheels in there? I do. We don't use them yet. Okay, so is that something you're working towards? Yes. Yes, we have them. I did that in college for a class. Ooh, loved it. It was great. I did it in high school and thought, oh, it's super easy. Like, I can, I took my senior pictures with pottery. Okay, that's how serious this is. Oh. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I wish I could find it. I know my I wish, has it I wish we had that right now. I wish we did. And when we find it, I will put it up. But I'm laying on the floor sprawled out with my pottery, okay? So this was serious. Wow. Okay, I'm impressed. And, um, we got Potter's Wheels, and I was like, yep, this is going to be fun. It's great. And then, no, it is not like riding a bike. You have to practice that stuff. Mm -hmm. So until... You're kind of retraining yourself. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, Let's yeah, see. you got to know what you're doing before you can teach others, for sure. <laughs> right. Especially, you know, a lot of people come in with really no skill at all. And, and then some, and some people come in and, you know, really know what they're doing, but it's like, how do you ask that? So, right. What, was your skill level right. beginner, immediate, or right. fantastic? Right. Yeah. Well, I think most people who have no skill are really quick to tell you yeah. when they have no skill. Usually. Especially, like, I know in my class, yeah, okay. they're, like, <laughs> petrified to even pay anything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, she did a really good job of pushing her paint down. And so she is going to start her stripes in red. And so... Just like she did with the blue, just one thin coat, so her um, wood grain shows through, she's gonna do the same thing with the red. And she's gonna make sure that she doesn't go too thick on it so she can see her wood grain. And then she'll paint down her sides. excited that um, idea tech has installed internet in our building and so far it's so good I don't have to use my data yeah after this is over this is going on my front door <laughs> it'll go on mine too to cover up the uh, pirate ship that's currently etched into my front door <laughs> What? <laughs> yes. Is there a story behind that we no, need to know? Well, we bought it that way. And what? I'm sure that there's a story. Is this like an engraving on your yes, door? Yes, yes. So someone legit picked out a door with a pirate ship on it? In Kansas. Yeah. Barker, are you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I do sometimes answer the door. My like a pirate. son would totally love that. He can, he can probably have it. <laughs> if you give me a door to replace it, he can probably have it. <laughs> I'm always covering it up with something, like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, we definitely have, like, late 70s doors. Um, we did slap a coat of paint on there to update them a little bit, but they're not, they're not gorgeous to me. So, yeah. I would love to get new doors. Well, your 70s door is probably better than my pirate ship. Well, yeah, I don't think I would trade for that. No bets. Well... <laughs> No offense taken. So 17 inches around is a pretty good sized door hanger. Will it cover the pirate ship, you think? If the, the string's long enough. I mean, it's a pretty big pirate ship. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. What color is your house? Gray, but the Battleship door Battleship gray. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, the door is red, and um, the pirate ship is engraved and painted. So, so could like, you paint like, the whole thing? thing one color so that it kind of blended in I could but I don't think it's gonna work it's it's pretty deep little how long has this thing. been like this well we moved to this house four years ago and we bought it like that <laughs> so I'm gonna guess it's like a hundred year old house but you've lived with it for four years yeah. and haven't done anything about it yeah I don't look at it very often because you're inside it <laughs> <laughs> and I cover it up all the time and that's then, funny and I'm reminded every time I do a door hanger about why we do door hangers. Yes. So she's gonna pick up her, she's taped hers to the table. She's gonna pick it up and do her stripes down the side. <laughs> so are you gonna keep doing your kits? Yes. Yeah, because we've had a lot of people who can't, don't wanna come in with little ones or mm -hmm. 
they have time after the kids go to bed or right so yes definitely awesome we're gonna do the same um, I feel like I'm still trying to figure out a steady normal yes. with getting back into the yes. swing of classes and with summer and everything else yeah. My kids are older than yours, so right. They have. They don't care if you're there or not. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I had the whole meltdown about leaving tonight. So. Wait, I used to have that. Yeah. Not anymore so much. Or they come with me. My daughter was with me all day today. Mm -hmm. She likes to sketch, so she was sketching and painting. Sounds like Everly. She keeps herself busy in here. Mm -hmm. She's been doing, and, and maybe some of you have been um, recipient of her free drawing with purchase. Oh. Yeah. So and sometimes on wood, sometimes on paper. Mm -hmm. She has them for pet owners and non-pet owners. She's good. <laughs> uh-huh. She's good at marketing. She does hold the door. Uh-huh. You walk in, she says, hello, kit buyer. <laughs> You're here for a pickup? <laughs> I'm training her. Good job. Yeah. You're doing good. Little one in training. Almost there. Just looking to see if there's anybody I know that's on there. The Minnesota governor. <laughs> it's not going well. No, it's not going well. I think these are all my peeps so far. I think Holly's. Holly's. You know Holly Stop? Yeah, she just went to high school with you. Yeah. Yeah, she lives in Texas now. Hi, yeah. Holly. We were in dance together. Well, you have to put her As face down and tell her who you are. She wasn't here for the introduction. She just came on. So, Holly, if you're listening, got a high school peep here for you. <laughs> Hi, Holly. It's Kylie. <laughs> Special guest. I think, actually, that dance picture is on my Facebook with her tag in it. Or she tagged me. Very nice. We were little. All right. So, you are going to dry that really fast. Um before we pull our tape off again, all tangled up in your wire. <laughs> what? We have a synchronized. Oh. <laughs> to um, do that you get paint on your hands and you touch the natural wood where you don't want paint if you have baby wipes or a wet paper towel handy you can get that off pretty quickly um, 
Unfortunately, if it dries, you're going to need a little sandpaper to get it off, but if you catch it quickly, you can get it to come off. Who puts this much tape on the back? Why did I do that? <laughs> These are also great for Lazy Susans. I don't know if you guys um, use those ever. I mean, I'm not really a Lazy Susan person, but they're super cute on the holiday table for this purpose. I mean, if you decorate for 4th of July, um, this would be cute on a picnic table. And they sell the little Lazy Susan kits that you just screw onto the bottom um, for like if you were entertaining. So just check your sides and make sure like your paint, like right here, didn't meet up so you can get a small brush and just touch up that little part before you move on to your stain. Make sure all your lines meet and then at the top there too. Not that anybody's going to be looking that closely. My UPS guy? Who's the UPS guy I inspect? Your decorations? I, your pirate ship? I mean, why wouldn't he? It's a pirate ship. <laughs> you are probably known as the pirate ship house. I mean, <laughs> with all the chickens. Yeah. Oh, lots of chickens. Okay. So, what we're going to do is seems a little scary, but we're going to cover everything with brown stain. Okay, so. What I learned in the process of making this one is not to press down too hard with the little rag that I'm going to cut for you and give to you right now. Because you don't want to drag any wet paint, if there is any. Um, everybody got a construction yellow piece of t-shirt. You're welcome. And a lot of times in class we use baby wipes to stain mm -hmm. with. This one I was a little worried about using something that, I'm going to say moist. <laughs> the word does not bother me. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Some people don't like it. Um, if you want to put a glove on, there's one there for you. But like I said, this is a... Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would watch this. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hey, my grandma's watching, so... Well, my grandma's watching. Now, all right. She's with all of my aunts, well, most of my aunts. Oh. Yeah. Got a crowd, yeah. All right. All right, so do you want the glove? It's here if you do. If you sure. don't. Like I said, this is water-based stain, so you're going to pull out the little cup that you got that has the brown stain. And I'm just going to make you dip right out of the can. Is that okay? That's fine. Stacy wants to see your sides. So here's where I wrapped my red, and then I just did solid blue. I didn't wrap the stars, so my stripes go around the side. And really, if they're not like super straight, that makes no difference. It's hanging on the wall. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to dip the rag in there. Yep, you're going to dip the rag in there. And when I stained it, I started on this part of the wood and then worked my way up as I was spreading it. So you're going to stain back and forth with the grain of the wood and you're going to blend it in as you go. And really that's all there is to it. And just don't press down too terribly hard on the paint section, if that makes sense. Yes. And it's going to deepen your red, which we want, because we want this whole thing to kind of go to the background. So the flag is not the most prominent. You want your name to be the first thing you see. So she's going to start covering that up. And just do one coat of stain first, OK? You don't want to go too crazy because you don't want to lose your red altogether. So just do one coat of stain. 
And then once you have the whole thing covered, you can go back and maybe touch up those areas where you don't quite have as much coverage and blend it in. Yeah, there might be areas of your wood that don't soak it in quite as fast. So those are the areas that you'll probably go back and hit with a little bit more and deepen them up. Because you want it to be consistent across the whole front of the thing with the stain. You know, the thing with the thing. The thing. <laughs> You're welcome, Stacy. So, Stacy, are you're not doing any kind of stencil on yours. She's doing kind of um, a one-off of this. She's not doing this exact design. She decided she would jack, hijack our class and do her own thing. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Sounds like something I would do. But I know she was thinking about what she might put on the front because there's so many, like, Options. Yeah, patriotic options. Like we were talking about Let Freedom Ring would be really cool. And then I saw one today on a franchise group that is Celebrate America. Hmm. Hadn't seen that one, so. So since this is a water-based stain, it's going to dry like a paint, like an acrylic paint, really. Oh, you're going to need more. I'm going to close one up more. Um, so when she gets done with that, I'm going to have her dry it because the next step will be to apply our stencil. So we don't want it too terribly damp. We want to make sure that she has dry to the touch on the top part at least. Tomorrow is my pool day. I'm pretty excited about that. Let me my pool day too if it's hot enough. We, I've been waiting on the water to warm up yes. here. And it has to be hot outside for me to want to get in the water. Yeah. And kids have been begging, begging, begging. I'm like, I'll put my feet in. <laughs> Don't splash me. <laughs> right? I do not like to be splashed at all. Yeah. They got some remote control boats and a remote control shark today. That was the jam. Okay, so she has a nice consistent look with all her wood grain. So if there's any areas she wanted to touch up, now would be the time for her to darken them up. She's going to hit the hair dryer on it to make sure that it is dry for her stencil. I will take that from you. Good to me. Good. Yeah. Not 
too wet. We'll see how your stencil sticks, and then we'll know. Yeah. yeah. This will be where we... So she, <laughs> she um, has dried it on the cool setting, so it is pretty dry to the touch. You want to make sure it's not damp or anything, so we can move on to the stencil part. So again, we've weeded these for you. And what the, I did was put these on first, and then I put my name in between. Um, and so your center is going to be, see where your leaves mm -hmm. kind of change direction there? That'll be your center that you can use on your line there. And then the and bottom. Should line up with this one. Yeah, and so your red line that goes across there, you can use as a guide to make sure it's kind of positioned to where it's even. And don't feel it like that. So what you're going to do is put it face down <laughs> and gently peel off the backing. And then you can just flip it over and just lightly place it on the wood. I wouldn't push it down yet until you're certain that you have it where you want it because it's still where you can move it around. Perfect. Now do this one and then we'll rub it together. <laughs> <laughs> so many artistic innuendos. So she's going to take the credit card edge again, and she's going to rub the stencil down. So when you rub it, you're going to see that it changes, you should see that it changes color a bit. And that's the look that you want across the whole thing, a little bit darker blue. So definitely take the time to do this part well. Don't skimp on it, because this is the part you really can't do much to fix if you mess it up, so no stress. Just one time, you get one time. You get one shot. So follow directions. <laughs> Not good at that. So Tara usually helps me um, with the crafting. And she's not here tonight, but I think what we're going to start doing as far as Splinter Studio goes is to open up um, a limited number of seats and try to do the live and the in-person class at the same time and see how it goes. It could be a total bust. We're just going to try it. I don't know. I don't know as far as being able to hear well with sound in the room, if that's going to be effective. Um, you need a microphone. Yeah, might have to do that. We're good? I'm going to get like the, the headset, like I'm um, uh, like a truck driver. Infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> so ch now that she has put this stencil on, she's rubbed it down, she's going to take off that protective layer of contact paper. And here's where you'll see, you'll see it's in several pieces. Okay because we kind of piece it together on the angle. So here's where you'll see as, as she's pulling it off, if you've got any areas that are not wanting to stick down, she's going to rub it with her fingers kind of as she pulls it off to make sure it stays down and she doesn't kind of undo all the work she just did. That's what I should do? Yes, that's what you should do. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said it. <laughs> Yeah, it does. I mean, this is a film, so it will tear if you're a little too forceful with it. Aggressive. If you're aggressive with your artwork, it will tear, so you don't want to do that. Oh, seriously. So she's just pushing it down again. So we are, we did send you 
in your um, kits a little package, a little thing of Mod Podge. It's not much, but it's plenty enough to do this project. So the reason I sent this is since there's no going back on the stain and trying to fix stuff if you have major issues, this will help keep your stencil down if there's any areas that are not wanting to stick well. So it'll be your clear bleed undercoat. So after we get all the stencils down, we'll put a layer of this down. This is why I'm 500 pounds heavier than I was before <laughs> COVID. Uh oh. It didn't rip. It's fine, everything is fine. <laughs> She's pulling it super slow so she doesn't rip it. <laughs> So with your name stencil, <laughs> if for some reason you have a really long name and the blue overlaps, you can trim this blue. You only need enough room to paint, a little border to paint. So if you need to trim some of this blue, you can, because you don't want the stencils to overlap over the open areas. Your name, however, does not do that, no. so we're all good. So, she is going to peel the back off again, gently. Gently. <laughs> now I used kind of my, as you can see through your stencil when you pull the backing off, so I use my red line kind of as my guide for my lettering. So I can see through and I can line up each letter. And then once you kind of have it tacked down, I would be glad to hold it up for you if you would like to look at it from a distance as well. It's okay. Okay, she's going with it. It's covering the rock or the uh, pirate ship, so. <laughs> and you also have your established, which is more of a straight font at the bottom, and that's a great way to make sure it's lined up as well because the bouncy font can be kind of hard to look at. How's that? Mm-hmm. That looks good. From the side there. Yeah. Um, you can also take a ruler and kind of measure the top of one letter to the top of your, you know, leaf. You're really going to your leaf, not to the blue. <laughs> Should not be drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you could center your establish in that red line. That would be pretty. This is why I say let's hold it up and look at it. <laughs> you can always tell better when you're looking at it upright. I still feel like it's too far down. Mm -hmm. You? Mm -hmm. I do agree with that. Now that, yeah. So maybe it, centering it is not a good idea. <laughs> tray again and really give it a good rub down. And she's going to peel off her top layer of contact paper. 
slowly. Slowly, yes. And gently. Because you are working with the stain, even though it's water-based, sometimes it just is resistant to the sticky. That's two pieces. Yep. I use scraps um, a lot of times all in my contact paper. So if you find more than one piece stuck together, that's why. Yeah, waste not, why not? This one really doesn't want to stick down. So we're just going to rub it as we go. See how she's kind of peeling it back flat ways? If you're pulling it up this way, you're gonna pull it off the wood. So if you roll it back like this, then you have a better chance of not pulling that stencil off the wood. Just be careful of your sharp pointy edges because they like to travel and tear. So now you're going to do a very thin layer of Mod Podge. I'll let you just dip right out of the jar. Since I'm not using stencils, can I just leave the natural wood? The poly yes, 100%. Um, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. So Stacy is not doing the exact same project, but something similar. So instead of doing a dark stain, she's just going to do a poly and let the true pine color show through, which is beautiful. Um, sure Stacy that you saw this when you were here but this is kind of an example of the Lazy Susan in a Puritan pine stain um, and I just decided not to do any stencils on that so you know Stacy since you're not doing a stencil you can use an oil based stain on this if you wanted to in a light color or go straight to the poly um, polyurethane coat on it well they have polyurethane with stain Oh, like a pre-blended? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that. Actually, most everything where I'm doing is kind of step mm -hmm. by step building, and I don't think I'm ever done with this the stain version. Like, you know what I mean? There's always right. like something else going on top of it. <laughs> Okay, so she is doing a very thin layer of Mod Podge over top of her letters. So she's going to kind of spread that out so she's not seeing huge white streaks. She wants thin translucent. So a little bit goes a long way. Um, that's why you don't have a ton in your little cups because you don't need a whole lot. And so this is going to fill in any um, grooves or gaps in the wood and create a seal so when you do your coat of paint over top it will pull it down that one little spot so as you're painting you're gonna see kind of if you have any gaps where this kind of goes under and that's gonna be a little area for you I usually take the end of my paintbrush and rub it to get it to stay down and then go back over the top with your I know. I wish we could have wall, uh, music. Can you not? No. For copyright reasons, Facebook will cut you off. So, yeah. No music. That could be another thing with the live mixed classes. People like music. Yes. 
so they would have to forfeit that part of the experience. <laughs> Part of it, I guess. I'll throw your trash away while you're finishing that. Stacey, if you're listening, um, I'd love to see your finished product when you get it done, just to see the difference. So, do you guys have any like traditions that you normally do on Fourth of July? Um, we used to go to the Sterling Fireworks. Mm -hmm. Or we would go to the Inman Fireworks, and now that my kids are older, we kind of just shoot off. We live out in the country, so. Mm -hmm. Do your own little we display. Own, yeah. We live in town, so that's in Hutch, so we don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> they some don't let you have any of the fun ones anyway. No, some of our neighbors do them anyway. But, um, yeah, my daughter's birthday is on the 3rd, so she thinks 4th of July is for, for her, her birthday. So. Well, it probably is then. I think we're... If, um, if we have the parade, I think they said the parade's still on. Okay, I think that's, I saw that. That's okay. good, because she absolutely loved it last year and thought it was for her birthday. <laughs> so she's gonna, I think, ride in the parade with Dad in his car this year. So she can wave to everybody for her birthday. Okay. For her, she she will <laughs> wave to everybody for her birthday. They're all there to say happy birthday. <laughs> she might even have a banner on the car that says "It's my birthday, wave at me." <laughs> And she should. Okay. All right. So since we used Mod Podge, this is like a form of Elmer's glue in a way. So you don't want to put heat on it. Just like you don't want to put heat on your stencil now that it's on because it'll melt the glue on the back. So we're going to go back to the dryer on the cool setting really quick. This, like her bottom part is already dry. So we're just going to catch up the rest, but it dries super fast. So all this work has led up to this. This one moment. This so one nervous. moment. If all your hard work was done correctly and you followed my directions to a T. We did. Now you can paint your stencil in. So let's see anything you like there as far as brushes go. Maybe something smaller. Do this one. Yeah. Because I'm just doing this, yeah? Yep. Mm -hmm. 
So I had two coats up white and I was pretty darn happy. Um, and then I went back to a couple little spots that didn't cover quite as well. So it really depends on your brush stroke and how you apply your paint. But you want to do a thin coat of white, dry it with the cool setting, and then do your second coat of white. Um, the key with the stencil is to do thin paints, uh, thin layers, and dry them in between. If you go thick on your paint, it's not going to dry all the way through. Um, and it, it, pulls off with your it pulls off with your stencil. Yeah, it's not going to here adhere as well. So, even though it takes more coats that way, it's just part of the process of having a great final product. So, yeah, I'm wondering who all is making this with us and what step they're on. If we're totally ahead of you or not. Uh, but just a reminder, if you're watching this and you are way behind, it's not a big deal. You can watch this back after our live is over um, and replay it as much as you need to. Um, stop and start. So I think we tend to work faster than most. Feels real I slow. Have found this feels slow for you. <laughs> I have a hard time listening. I'm sorry. Like I'm not a rule person. You're doing good. You're doing good. Have another drink. <laughs> but you don't have a problem teaching. Nope. I don't have a problem with other people not following rules. I just really don't like to follow rules. <laughs> Maybe that's why you do more free paint, less stencil. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more. You can do whatever you want. Instruction. You can use whatever colors you want. We're painting a tree and you want to paint a moon, you do you. <laughs> do you find that most people go their own way or they're really like copiers? Better at just doing what you tell them. Um, it's about half and half. You probably have your regulars that are more confident and will mm -hmm. do what they want. So tell me, I think you told me this the other day, but tell me when, when did your studio open here? I think 2016. Not really just the paint dates. canvas part. Just the on paint fifth, canvas right? on fifth, mm -hmm. yes. And then just in May of last year, we added ceramics. Um, and then that's kind of developed into doing clay classes and pottery and mm -hmm. all kinds of other things. So we kind of combined the both of them. We had them in two separate buildings. Yeah. And then combined them into one. That's hard to be in two one. places. It was? Yeah. So. And it's fun to be part of the downtown. North downtown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we kind of missed out on the art version of Third Thursday. I think it was back in mm -hmm. April. April. Yeah. Yeah, we usually do a week of the young child. Mm -hmm. And are you? I feel like in the past you may have done kids camps. Are you doing yep. that? Um, I'm working on those now. I'm not sure what those are going to look like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> as far as are we going to do? Are they typically? They've like typically been three days, half a day. Okay. Um, but is this, there age groups that you typically require? Um, usually eight and above. Oh, okay. But sometimes we have siblings. younger or siblings, yeah. Yeah. So, so this is dry. Yep, so she started at the bottom, so she's going to go back to where she started and put on her second coat. So if you go back and you're starting your second coat and you find that you're taking the paint off versus really getting good coverage on a second coat, then you need to dry with your dryer before you paint anymore because you're just kind of a wasted effort.
looking good though. Thanks, I've never done this before. It always looks a little different as it dries and kind of soaks into the wood though. So I always think, oh, two coats is gonna be perfect and then it dries and I'm like, no. <laughs> Five coats is perfect. <laughs> for rusting. True. Yep. It would be, I just, I'm not a fan of seeing brush strokes though. So if I was really consistent with the stroke and it didn't look streaky, right. I would probably be okay with it. I'm too OCD about everything. I'm only OCD on things I want to be. Like I gave some of that up. Excited for the big reveal. Oh, me too. <laughs> I wonder what it's going to look like. Oh. Beauteous. So the font I'm using is called Corona. Oh. How <laughs> appropriate is that for the season of our lives right now? I'm over it. <laughs> dry it before you peel all that off though. To make sure the brush strokes are okay. Yeah, I would say dry it and then just do a double check if see if you want to add any more anywhere before we take off the stencil because you're done. So now you have a kind of a true image of what this is going to look like. It's dry. So you may decide you want to put a little more paint on some of the places where it looks a little streaky. Totally up to you. Don't let me influence you whatsoever. When you say you may, that means I'm supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest maybe touching up those few areas. Now is your front door where it gets uh, moisture or is it covered? Um, we have a screen door there. Okay. So if you're making this project and your porch is not covered or doesn't have protection from the elements, I would strongly suggest that you put a spray polyurethane over top. Um, super easy to apply, an aerosol can, you can get it at Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot. Um, just a clear polyurethane that will help your wood um, and your paint stay, especially if it gets wet. It 
if you're a person that likes a glossy finish too, they sell poly in gloss, you can, you can buy a glossy. I usually pick a matte finish, but I'm starting to kind of lean to the gloss on occasion. I like everything shiny. You do. Glitter, all the glitter. Oh God. Love glitter. Like if I was at my studio, yeah, I'd, right. I would glitter this. You like glitter? I can pull out the glitter from the kid table stash. It's okay. <laughs> we use those for the big kids. Yeah. There's a select few that know I have it. Now everybody does. Now everyone knows. She it. has glitter, guys. Use it. <laughs> so when you put glitter, let me ask you how you do. When you put glitter on, say, a stencil item like this, what's your method? Paint it, make sure it's wet, and then Sprinkle glitter. It. Mm -hmm. And then, which makes put, finding the little pieces hard sometimes. But. Yeah. So, do you use Mod Podge at all to co cover over top of it? No, you'll want to spray it. Yeah, um, with a poly. With a poly, or else it'll streak the glitter. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants streak. So are you a heavy hander on the glitter or yeah. do you sprinkle? Oh, you cover all the glitter. All of it. I've seen like different methods with the glitter application. I'm the same way. I paint wet, spray, glitter. sprinkle. Mm -hmm. um, but then I've had a lot of people that theirs just comes right off if the paint's not quite wet enough, I think. Right. That's why it has to be real wet. You have to do a little bit to mm -hmm. the time. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so... Give that one more dry, and then we can fill it up. at this point of the project and you start peeling your stencil off and you notice that it's like stretchy Splinting. well like stretchy paint like pulling your paint mm -hmm. stretchy then I would suggest you stop and you let it dry some more before you peel your vinyl I know it's like really hard to wait but um, that's one thing it's just gonna be too damp to pull so here we go so nervous so with this wood too you're going to want to pull against the grain. If you pull this direction with it, that the grain's going this way, if it grabs a splinter, it's going to grab the wood with it and pull a string. And you're going to have, you know, huge um, natural wood lines where it's pulled. So she's going to pull down this way against the grain when she's pulling her stencil off. I think I might put a glossy polyurethane on this one. Ta da! Oh, it's not over yet. <laughs>
classes at the World Market? I have not. Uh, my grandma's a crocheter, like I'm a crocheter. I'm not talented in that in any way, <laughs> shape, or form. I, um, my grandma, when I was little, taught me to crochet. Mm -hmm. And I can do a pretty good chain. Mm -hmm. And then a second line, accounting and the paying attention. Yeah, no. I don't see how she does it. Um, I'm mean, so impressed. Yes. She makes my kids stuff all the time. Toys and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I try it. She Every had a class a um, that was felt. Yes. Uh, Scarves or something? No, it was animals, felt animals. Um, wool felting, is mm -hmm. that what it's called? Yep. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do that. That looked cool. Well, it, I feel like it was right about the time that everything went haywire. Yes. So. She, I don't know, she may have had to cancel that one. I don't know for sure. You have a chance to do it again. Maybe. Stacy's gonna send us a picture. Awesome. I love customer shares. Anybody else that's making this and you want to share with us your final result, oh, we would love to see it. Even if it's not perfect. Okay, so you'll see that she's pulled it off and the only thing left is the little tiny pieces in the middles. So she's gonna go back with a stick pin to pick those out. So when you do this part, you wanna go flat with your pin um, and kind of catch the edge of the vinyl. If you stick it, you're gonna jab your wood and you'll end up with a, a line from the pin basically. So you want to try to go as flat as you can to catch an edge, and then once it's pulled up, you can grab it with your fingers and peel it off. You'll kind of get the feel for it pretty quickly. Um, luckily with this one, they come off pretty easy because of the stain. I like it. This one's very classy. Man will know <laughs> a UPS who guy. lives here. Right. And the status of your relationship. <laughs> right. <laughs> there you go. Done. Done. Looks awesome. Thanks. Great job, beginner. Great, right? <laughs> <laughs> Great job, beginner. Oh, awesome. So everybody got in their kits little hooks for the top and Real quick, little eye hooks. Hopefully when you started your project, you saw the eye hooks were at, the holes were drilled at the top of your wood. Because if the holes are at the bottom now, I didn't drill yours. Okay. We're gonna drill yours. <laughs> um, I should have mentioned that really to look for those holes because your eye hooks um, are gonna go on the top of your piece if for some reason you messed it up and the, and the holes are at the bottom, it's not a huge deal. You're just gonna have to kind of force these down in there and create your own little hole. I did pre-drill thinking it would be a little easier, but so we are going to put two holes and I tend to put them about two inches apart so that you have a little give on your string right. to straighten it. So would you like to drill your holes off of it for you? Are you sure? Can you turn it towards me like this? Sure. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just gonna go straight up and down. And when you come to class, you get to use the power tools and do it yourself and not fish it off on me to do. <laughs> All right, so you're just gonna twist these in. And a trick, if you get them started, 
you can stick your paintbrush through the eye hook and just twist it with your paintbrush. It's really easy to draw it out. But... Oh, good. I feel like the this board is softer. Super easy. Yeah. The pine. Um, we use this size and we use a 15 inch board by a different company, and those tend to be a little harder, I think, than this. And the reason I like to put the eye hooks at the top is because that gives you the versatility to flip it over and make something on the back side if you would like. So you're going to face them both the same direction and work like that. And then you're going to take your twine and however long you need for the pirate ship, you're going to cut it. I didn't know I needed measurements. Just one or do you double it? I just use, usually mine are short, so I just use one and double knot it. If you feel like you need extra, to take home and maybe like just adjust it later just take extra and then you can cut it shorter if you need to later just for class purposes we'll just call it good like that okay. and I didn't put any of mine so I'll do mine real quick too Project, we kind of ask you guys if you have any questions, which we haven't really, everybody's been quiet, so I feel like either you're just hanging out with us or you're going to make it later. So if you have any questions before we sign off for the evening, now's kind of your time to chime in here. If you're interested in making something on the back of this, let me know and we can you out with how did yours go in so easy and mine are not <laughs> I'm really strong <laughs> oh, okay I'm gonna show you the trick <laughs> mine are going crooked and not easily hi Peyton <laughs> That's my best friend, Peyton. She's getting in. It's our opportunity to tell you hi before mm -hmm. you say bye. I think she's five. Oh, how fun. All right. So I've got mine in and lined up, and we'll do a little string on mine. So again, if you're, if you're just kind of tuning in to watch us and we've already finished here and you're interested in making this American flag door hanger with your family name on it, or even welcome, we could do welcome, just uh, head on over to the website at splintersandrust.com. There are a couple kits still available, and we will get you hooked up, and then you can watch this back and make it on your own. So, I think that's good? Yes. I'm Love happy. It. Me too. All right, well, we will bring you on down here and say see ya. And then don't forget to look for our, gosh, my hair looks so fun. Don't, don't forget to look for our event coming out on June 1st. Kids for Caregivers is what it's called. We're going to hashtag it that. And we really would like to highlight the caregivers in your life that have been on the front lines during COVID-19. So um, look for that coming out on Monday, and we appreciate you making this with us. So have a good night. Bye.